Hey, it's Sam. I'm making this quick recording uh, to talk about the recent tragedies in Paris with the, you know, with the terrorist actions and whatnot. Um, obviously, very sad situation. I've had a couple people, you know, say they don't know how this is being shown in Vedic astrology because, well, Jupiter's exalted and Venus and Mercury are together, and you know, why is that being shown? Well. There's a couple things, and it's it really gives a good opportunity to circle back on a few important lessons about astrological dignity and things like that. These, when 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 these happenings occurred, um, Jupiter, of course, is, has been retrograde, and it's in a slash in Nakshatra, and it happened on January 7th, at least the first, you know, the beginning of that Paris incident. And it happened on the day when this moon also joined Jupiter in Cancer. And so we had this moon-Jupiter conjunction, so you can really see that Jupiter was, you know, very prominent in this action. And Aslesha Nakshatra is um, an intense one. It's ruled by the god Sarpa, and it's really related to the god Adishesha. Um, which is the thousand-hooded serpent that Lord Vishnu is sleeping upon that, you know, is, um, has a lot of sort of diabolical potential. And it's where we get entwined and entangled in something, and now what's getting entangled is Jupiter retrograde. So what is Jupiter, and why is, the, why is this retrograde motion um, important? First of all, you know, Jupiter is the planet of our principles, philosophies, ideals, and that includes things like, like you know, um, corrupt ideologies that lead people to terrorism. The people that stormed the building of the magazine in France, they were driven by an ideology, and in, in, in their mind, they were doing the right thing. They came in and shouted, Allah Akbar, God is great, and then killed the infidels who were defaming Muhammad in their mind. So this is a total Jupiterian action, at least the sanction, the religious belief that even to kill people because they're defaming your God is okay. And of course, killing them you know, that, that sort of violence is more related to Mars um, and also Saturn, you know, the malefics. But the inspiration and the ideology behind it is a total Jupiter thing. Again, this is Jupiter retrograde, so it shows it's a reversal. It's backing up on itself and internalizing, and especially in, in a diabolical nakshatra like Aslesha, which has a lot of potential to get entangled and entwined in something that's not intelligent, that's more emotional. So in addition to that, you know, we still have this exchange between Mars and Saturn. And on, you know, on January 7th, Mars had just left Capricorn where he was exalted. And again, Mars is exalted in Capricorn because it's internal and it's reflecting and concentrating our energy internally on long-term solutions which have to do with Saturn. So it's tempting to think that Mars in Cap uh, that Mars in Aquarius, which is the other Saturn ruled sign is also kind of good, you know, it's one of those things it sounds kind of right, so, you know, maybe, you know, I guess Mars in Aquarius is kind of good too, right? Well, no. And it's, again, it's one of those things that sounds sort of good, and I hear Jodish students, and even Jodishis quite a bit, make, make references to things like that. Well, it's exalted in Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn, so it's still pretty good in Aquarius. Not, not really. When you use the classical rules of Parashra, Mars and Saturn would be enemies with each other. However, this is why you've got to be careful with exalted placements, because they're often wild cards and show some very specific things. So that Mars-Saturn, when Mars was in Capricorn, that Mars-Saturn exchange when Mars was in Capricorn, the 
some of the diabolical potential was kept under control. However, we saw a lot of the abuse of authority, those hidden agendas coming out because Saturn is in Scorpio, Mars is in Capricorn, so they're both feminine signs and the hidden agenda and the, and the, and the abuse of power that comes from hidden, hidden um, you know, stereotypes and racism. We saw those things explode in the U.S. with all of the um, protests and the police officers killing innocent victims and the backlash against that, very much shown by the exchange between Mars and Saturn. And again, this is to advance these causes. It's to bring a lot of awareness to those things. We still have the exchange, but now Mars moves into Aquarius and it's a much more public global phenomenon because that's what Aquarius is it's more about things that are bigger than just our individuality and that would even mean the individuality of a country and if we want to look to a a sense of progress around this tragic event look at how it brought together countries of the world in solidarity over the weekend in Paris to march against you know being bullied by terrorists um, so, it, in a positive way, it, it really brought that out on a more social global level because Mars was in Aquarius. So, we saw this social component, this kind of social violence um, in a big way. And, and as we've seen, um, you know, um, it's kind of rallied the world against this kind of terrorism and brought together. Um, uh, you know, sort of one voice solidarity against this kind of intimidation. And again, um, you know, when Saturn was in, or when Mars was in Capricorn, it was more hidden, and these things were probably being planned then. And then as soon as he goes into Aquarius, you see this explosion, outer explosion. And again, even just the qualities of masculine and feminine, Aquarius is the masculine nature of Saturn, the outer expressive quality. Mars in Aquarius, you know, Mars has a potential for violence on a large scale that is in protest to social, you know, to a social event like publishing this paper that ridicules their god. That's very much, you know, Mars and Aquarius fighting back against that. The other thing to realize is that this retrograde Jupiter is aspecting Ketu in Pisces, Jupiter, you know, it's 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 a it's a wide orb, and they're yeah. you know they're both moving backwards because both K2 and um, Jupiter are moving backwards. But there's still an aspect there. There's an influence, and K2 is also very much about ideology and explosiveness, and especially the rigid application of ideology. Rigid ideology has a lot to do with K2 as well. Um, especially in Pisces, which is ruled by Jupiter. Again, any kind of, of um, religious fervor and, um, you know, any kind of act that's driven by a, by a rigid application of some philosophy is going to have Jupiter involved, usually. Either Jupiter signs or Jupiter directly. Jupiter retrograde in Cancer, or, or in Aslesha, very much about this. And again, you want to understand this principle of exaltation. Jupiter is exalted at the earliest degrees of Cancer, five degrees. And these are the, this is the place where Gemini becomes Cancer, where the intelligence of Gemini becomes inculcated in the heart, those early degrees of Cancer. That's where Jupiter is exalted, where intelligence and wisdom, or, you know, intelligence through experience, which is Gemini, starts to permeate the heart, which is Cancer and the nakshatras of Punarvasu and the very beginning of Pushya. That's where Saturn is exalted. In Aslesha, it's at the very end of Cancer, and it's a whole different energy. You want to understand that, so don't poo-poo exaltation degrees, especially with Jupiter and the Moon, because they're exalted and debilitated at very early degrees of the signs. So that's also very important to consider when you think about this and let it be a lesson to pay attention to exaltation degrees instead of saying Jupiter's exalted in Cancer. Well, I know it's retrograde, so why is that happening? Be careful with that.